Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and I get a lot of questions from folks about editing video on low-end PCs, so I figured I would take a look at the state of affairs here. Uh, we've got a $250 computer here from HP. This is their Stream 14, and I've got a little video editing app loaded up on here that's called VideoPad. It is free on the Microsoft App Store, and I took some footage, 1080p, uh, with my Nikon camera upstairs and thought I would just drop a few of these clips in to see uh, how you might be able to do some rudimentary video editing on here. And overall, I found it to be a, a somewhat usable experience here. So you can see I'm uh, playing back this clip here. We can then cut to this other clip here. I'm sure we're getting a little bit of frame drop here or there on the preview, but it's uh, good enough, I think, to work with. So for example, I can adjust the length of this clip a little bit here. Maybe we can drop a transition in there and get that going. I actually haven't used this uh, app before, so this is a new thing for me. Uh, and we'll just do what it wants me to do there. And we'll go ahead and play this back and see if we can get a nice transition in there. So you can see it's kind of choking a little bit because it has to render that out. If you had a faster computer with an i5 or an i7 processor, that might go a little smoother. Uh, but once it sits and maybe processes that a little bit, uh, you should be able to go ahead and edit with it. And then we can do some other stuff here, like bringing in a little picture-in-picture -picture action here too. So if we go back over to the timeline here and play this out, uh, you can see now the transition is smoother because it did render that. Uh, and now we can also do some picture-in-picture -picture where I've got a little barbecue video here uh, running alongside this other clip here. And it's able to do this uh, fairly well on playback, but rendering really is the bottleneck here, given the fact that the N4000 processor here just isn't all that powerful for creating video versus viewing it. So I think generally, um, if you're just doing this kind of editing where you're not doing a lot of layers of video and doing all this crazy stuff, um, I think you should be okay to do some very lightweight editing on something like this. But again, if you're uh, running 4K video and trying to get a lot of special effects going and chroma key perhaps, uh, these really cheap PCs are probably not going to be good for that. Another thing you'll notice too is when you go to export the final video. Uh, so if I do an export here, we'll just drop this over to uh, the desktop as a video file. We'll go back to uh, 1080p here just to kind of replicate the output we might want for YouTube and I'll go ahead and click Create. Uh, this is gonna take a while because these computers are really well suited for watching video, but they are not very good at actually encoding the video that you need to output. So here we've got you know, maybe 20 seconds of video, and you can see that we're only about 5.5% through the export of this video uh, on this little low-end computer here. So this is really where the bottlenecks are going to be uh, any kind of rendering, any kind of exporting the video, that's when you're really going to start feeling the limits as to what uh, you can do with a low-end computer here, although it is possible uh, to actually do stuff. And you can see it's speeding up a little bit now. I think it might have gotten through that portion where it had to render out the uh, transition between the two clips. But nonetheless here, we're looking at, again, about 20 seconds of video or so, and it'll probably take uh, easily five minutes or so for this uh, video to export out of this low-end PC. So if you're curious, that's the best you're going to get, I think, on uh, something like this. You might actually get better performance out of a tablet like an iPad. There's some great video editing apps on the iPad. Uh, or your smartphone may actually do a better job than this too. So uh, again, watching video is great. Stringing clips together is great. But here is where the bottlenecks are going to show up on the output or on the rendering. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.